the, the need for upgrading the intellectual property regime in Canada. And if you noticed um, this week uh, with the new Obama reform, there was also movement towards 12 years data protection for biologics. So if you look, if you add that to the list, again, Canada falls short, not bottom of the list, but when you're looking for the research dollars to bring in those, uh, the, those major research um, uh, contracts, you have to be top of class. So we are working very hard with the governments and, and other payers to make sure we find the, the, the collaborative models to bring innovative medicines uh, to Canadians. We're also working with the governments to advance a better IP regime in which we could do the research. But I just thought I'd spend a couple of minutes on a couple of other um, interesting stories because I don't believe we tell our story very much, the positive story, and we don't tell it very well often. So this is, an, this, this is, um, this is a recent study, uh, a recent example that I think is quite exciting for Canada when you think about it. Yes, there were some growing pains as we went through it, but I don't know if you know that, that Canada has the best immunization rate of any country in the world at 45%. And that's because of good collaboration between industry, uh, healthcare providers, and governments. And it's an exciting story that, we're going, that we can build on. We are also one of the first countries to have full capacity. Um, again, we don't talk about this in Canada very, very much, but we can be very proud that we have full capacity. Now, the government has talked about rethinking and reworking some of its vaccine policies. I don't believe that we've given enough attention to the innovations, the risks, the research that goes into vaccines, and I think that will be a, a new and growing um, issue that we will be talking about. As we, as we move forward, um, there's other issues that we're dealing with. Canada's access to medicine regime, if you've been following the de debate in Ottawa, is, um, is quite a hot debate, and that is um, a rule in which um, after, after certain negotiations there would be some flexibility in the patent regime to make sure medicines go to to uh, developing worlds. Our in innovative medicines are leader in giving um, um, very creative uh, pricing models, very um, creative royalty issues to make sure that we can get innovative medicines to, to, um, to the developing world, particularly Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and there is a concern though that if we continue this debate, there are still some people thinking that we'd have to change our IP regime to continue to do that. I won't, this is a uh, complicated issue, but um, um, I did want to highlight that as something on the political front. Um, another issue that the industry is working on a, on a, on a day to day basis um, is our ethical practices. Um, again, I'm very proud to represent uh, the research based pharmaceutical industry that has a very robust code of, of ethical practices. We have also passed a transparency guideline because guidelines as we deal more and more, more with patient groups and stakeholders we have to make sure that that relationship is professional and um, is uh, above all scrutiny. So we've developed those and we're continuing to develop those. If we're going to build the partnerships that I talked about before, about getting better access to innovative medicines and vaccines, people have to trust us and feel comfortable with us. I'm pleased that Peter and I are working on, um, uh, with Biotech Canada, um, uh, beginning to talk about whether there's common, common positions between our codes. Um, very important as we move forward. And then finally, seizing some of the opportunities that we have ahead of us. Um, one of the things I'd like to convey today is that there is an incredible sense of urgency. There is a, about $100 billion in, in um, R&D, life sciences, money around the world. We get about a billion of it, but it is moving around very quickly. If we don't change the model of IP and access to medicines, we will not be able to continue to enjoy the research community that we have here. Um, but there are some exciting um, uh, initiatives. Um, you see the work of the MRI in Ontario here. Uh, George Ross, the Deputy Minister, has been working very hard. You see the Quebec, Ontario, um, since you see a good representation of Toronto, Montreal here, uh, talking about a life science corridor. So there's beginning to get some, some work um, on, on dealing with clinical trials templates to that we alleviate some of the barriers that are on, on a global level. So I believe the collaborative approach is the approach that's going to win the day. I believe very much if we can convince the governments, um, and uh, I think this is cornerstone, to treat us as partners in the healthcare system versus suppliers. That sets a whole new set of uh, criteria and methodology of working together. And what I'm sensing, and that, that's why I voted yes, that it's going to get better, um, is what I'm sensing is governments may not fully understand how to do this, 
but are interested in working more and more with the innovative pharmaceutical community to build those partnerships um, in the healthcare system. So the, 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 the plan of um, the strategy for 2010 is working on partnerships um, and, and working on predictability. So I hope within 10 minutes I can quickly cover some of the major issues. There's a lot of other re uh, issues that the in industry is dealing with, and, but I think the other speakers are going to talk about it. I mean, you can just list them, the CDR, the PMPRB, regulatory affairs, etc. But I think um, we will we'll address those a little bit later. I hope that gave you a bit of a sense of direction of RX&D and some of our major priorities. Thank you.